Hello, and welcome to another tutorial from Kimmy Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill, and today I'm gonna show you how I made this 3D Halloween Tumblr Charm coffee mug. As always, all the products I use will be listed in the description below, and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. If you like this video and want to see future crafting tutorials, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can be notified of all new content. Also, come join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation let's go ahead and get started for this design i am using a camper mug i just do not know if it's 12 or 14 ounces because it was not labeled on the box and the company i purchased it from is no longer in business so i couldn't look up my order but it is a camper mug style you can find them a bunch of different places but i mixed up about 10 milliliters of epoxy i've been working on a couple of other projects so this was just some excess so i'm just going to apply a super thin layer around the entire surface of the cup and then we are just going to kind of tap it to kind of spread it out and then i am going to start at the top rim with this super one of the most halloweeny <laughs> glitters there is it's called bone daddy from the Gl drunk flamingo i don't know why i said the glittered flamingo but i am just starting with this glitter and kind of doing an ombre into the middle of the cup now the next glitter is not typically a halloween one but it went perfect with this design and this is wild wild west again from the drunk flamingo and i am just coating that butt and then just blending it into bone daddy just to kind of give it a nice bit of dimension with the two glitters um, i'm also going into bone daddy just to make sure that it's blended um, but the thing with this glitter is it's got gray in it so it really just kind of pulled the whole look together i let that dry then i went in with two coats of epoxy um, i used artistry's one-to-one -one fast set and don't you love that nice shot of my hand um, but once that was all cured I grabbed my flap wheel um, that you can see there I use 120 grit flap wheel and I'm just going around at the top of the mug to expose a little bit of stainless steel that you can see there and then I smooth out the edges with my sanding block just so there isn't any pokey bits at the top of the tumbler. After I got the top rim the way I wanted it, I did just come in with that sanding block and smooth out the handle because Bone Daddy is a little bit, I would say a medium chunky mix. So I didn't want to have any kind of big pieces that would make the handle uneven because this is actually a tumbler that I made for myself and you'll see why um, here in a little bit. But I'm also just gonna use my sanding block to knock down any of like pokey spots or places where the glitter is sticking up and just give myself a nice smooth um, surface to work with when we move move into the next steps. When I'm all done with my sanding, I will wash the cup with Dawn dish soap and water, set it to the side and let it dry while we work on the next step. So you're probably wondering why I have a cardboard box, but this is the easiest way I have found to work with tumbler charms or acrylic blanks is that you just cut a little piece of cardboard, roll up a piece of painter's tape and then just stick it to the cardboard. So that way you can move the tumbler charm around really easily and get all of the decorations applied to it that you might want. So I just roll some painter's tape around my fingers, cut it in half, and then I will stick it to the cardboard. Now, I did not record me um, molding these ghosts that you'll see here in a second to the tumbler, but there's a couple of options. You can use your heat gun and then just push them to the size of your tumbler, or you can just microwave some hot water, get them hot, set them on your cup, and then bend them to the um, size and the shape of your cup. So there's a couple of different ways, but pretty much you just want to heat them up whatever way that you make com like feel comfortable. I would not recommend an open flame um, just because it's just not the best, but heat them up and then just mold them to the surface of your cup. I let these cool and then I'm just coming in with a little bit of an off-white paint. Now the reason why I wanted off-white is because a lot of the kind of um, vibes or tones of the glitters and the different colors that we're using are kind of that warmer so or the warmer tones so I wanted to do off-white instead of that stark white so I did one coat let that dry and then I came in with a second now these little ghosts they do glow in the dark um, they're from Cami Page Boutique I will list them down in the description below but we did just recently launch some uh, amazing Christmas ones as well. So there's all kinds of stuff for the different projects. But here are also some tombstones that we did for Halloween. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna bend these to the cup. So I'm just taking my heat gun like this and I'm heating up the tombstone and that is on a silicone mat. I can list the silicone mats that I use in the description below. But 
I don't know how to explain it, but you're going to see it. Like if you're paying attention and looking at the tumbler charms, it's almost like the texture changes a little bit and you're gonna know that it's time to apply it to the cup. So you can see there, it got pliable. You could kind of see it change. And then I'm just going to push down the size and sides in the bottom to get it to mold to my tumbler. So it's super easy to do. And one thing I would recommend, um, just because I kind of ran into this a little bit um, afterwards, is almost when you pull them off the tumbler, do it right before they're completely cool and almost over bend them. So that way they make sure to hold their shape and they don't kind of flatten out on you um, when you do take them off the cup. So I'm just gonna do these with all the tombstones. I am going to be applying all five tombstones to this tumbler, um, but you can definitely use as many tumbler charms that you like. Um, this is just the process that I went through to create this design on this mug. Once I got them all bent into shape, <laughs> get it? It's really bad, but yeah. Um, I'm just gonna take some glitter glue and then I am just going to take a paintbrush and paint the tombstones. Um, this is Pintastic from Glitter Dip Sips. I really like this glitter just because it's got some silver and a nice, black and some grays to it so it was really nice for my tombstones to add that depth i didn't want to go full black because i didn't want it to be too stark of a contrast but i am just taking a little paintbrush and painting the sides of the tombstones and then also the top of the tombstone with a nice even coat that way when i apply it to the cup um you don't see any of the 3d printing it's not visible. Um, if you like the 3D printing look, you can absolutely go with that. Um, you could also paint on micas or tack it over these as well. Um, I just really wanted to go with the glitter perspective on this just because I thought it was really pretty. Um, and so I'm just gonna go over the entire top. Now, if you wanted to leave the rest in piece there, you could absolutely do that. I'm gonna show you actually what I end up doing those or doing with those later on in the tutorial. But um, I just decided just to paint over them because I wanted more more of a um, handwriting look versus the very crisp lines of the rested piece that are on there now. So I did the first one. I'm just going to move through and do all five of the tombstones. I let those dry for about 45 minutes and then I did do two coats of clear gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I highly recommend sealing these because then when you go in to apply them to your tumblers, you don't have the glitter coming off all over your hands and then you don't have to do a lot of touch up. So so do make sure to let the glue um, dry fully with your glitter and then spray seal them twice and I promise it will set you up for success when we go to apply these tumbler charms to your cups. So here's the magic trick that I forgot to mention when we talked about the ghost previously. So I actually painted the back side and the sides of the ghost. So that way when they glow in the dark, it was more vibrant because of the paint. So you can see there the sides are painted um, as well as the back side, which I had showed you previously. Um, but I found that that worked the best to really get the best glow from the ghost. So I'm just gonna come in again with the glitter glue from um, Colorflex. And so I'm just going to paint over the entire surface of the ghost really making sure not to get any of the glue inside the eyes or the mouth and then I'm gonna come in with this white linen it is a beautiful off-white from the drunk flamingo and again it's sticking with that kind of off-white color scheme to kind of go with everything else on the cup and then I moved over to the second ghost so I did spray seal the ghost like I had mentioned but I'm showing you there how nice it is when you have these sealed tumbler charms before you apply them to your cup so after everything is good and dry from being sealed, I'm going to use Loctite Super Glue. I'll list it down in the description below. And I wanted to apply the cross tombstone first because it was the only one of its kind that I was going to be applying it to the tumbler. So I applied it, put a little bit of super glue on it and then just held it in place. And I almost wanna say like it almost clicks. Like, like when you apply it, you're gonna be holding it in place and it almost feels like um, the tumbler charm's moving with the super glue. And then you're gonna feel it catch and then you know it's ready to go. It's really hard to explain, but I, trust me, um, <laughs> that's how it was. But I'm also going to be alternating the sizes of the tombstones. So I did a square one, I did a round tombstone and 
and then I did the cross and I did the same thing on the other side and now I'm just going to apply a little bit of the super glue and apply the ghost so another thing is if you're finding that the tumbler charms aren't really molding to your cup the way that you wanted you can absolutely use a heat gun and heat them up again and push them down and then you'll get them to really move and mold the way that you want them so I had originally cut this decal when I was live um, and that's what you're seeing here, but I actually ended up switching it up because um, I used the awesome and I absolutely love the textured vinyl from TechRap. Um, I got it from Vinyl Fun for Everyone, but I had used kind of a slate color glitter uh, vinyl over the top of it and while you can kind of see it here it just did not stand out the way that I wanted to so I ended up pulling this off and then doing the exact same decal that I'll mention it's from Creative Fabrica I'll list it below um, but I cut it with the black vinyl and it definitely popped a lot more and gave me the dimension that I wanted with the decal. One thing I did forget to mention is before I applied the decal, I did go in with a coat of epoxy after I had applied the um, 3D charms that you see here. That's what's allowing me to write on them so easily. So um, I did go in with one coat of epoxy. It's still kind of rough and bumpy just because I did a super thin coat. I just really wanted to make sure that the tumbler charms were adhered well and I could add the little bits of details here and there. Here, I'm trying to add some details to the ghost. It just did not turn out well so I just ended up right like just completely wiping it all off but I did go over the rest in piece with this acrylic marker and then I did add a little kind of funny detail between my like my husband and I um, so on the cross tombstone um, I put Nick and then acted up underneath it so if you aren't in our Facebook group we have a lot of fun and most of the time it is at Nick's expense so it was just kind of a little joke that um, me and the group members thought that we would play so there it says Nick and then underneath it it says acted up and then I went ahead and I added a little bit of the rest in peace well not a little bit I did add the rest in peace to the other two tombstones on the front of the tumbler once that was done I let it dry and I went in with two coats of epoxy to kind of seal it in but then I felt like the tumbler was really missing something. And I went back and forth about whether or not I wanted to do this next step, but I'm really happy I did because I think it turned out really well. So nothing about this cup is supposed to like be realistic. It's, it's very much just kind of whimsical and fun. So what I wanted to do is add some spider webs. So I'm taking an acrylic pen right here. Like you can see, it's just like an acrylic marker. And I wanted to draw some spider webs on to the cup. And the reason why I'm starting with drawing them on is because sometimes when you see um, different Halloween graphics or just kind of looks of things it's kind of got that grunge background to it and so that's what I wanted to do with this acrylic marker so I'm using the side of it I'm making it look pretty wispy so it's not perfect it's not um symmetrical all the way down I just wanted to add kind of a background element so you can see there I'm using the side of the marker to again make it look really wispy and kind of old and grungy so I'm just coming in and again well, not again, but just don't feel like you can't do this step. Like that is the biggest thing that I want to emphasize. You're like, oh, I can't draw. I can't do any of this. Um, so they're there. Like you would see right there. I messed up. Don't be afraid to wipe it off, but um, just kind of come in and make it what you want. And we're going to make it look more finished in just a minute, but just kind of come in and just apply a spider web, whichever way that you like. I started on the middle of the the opposite side of the handle, if that makes sense. And I used the um, cross tombstone as my guide because I knew I'd gotten that um, pretty nicely centered on the tumbler. So again, I made like the four lines that you see there. And then I'm just coming in and just making the cross marks of the spider web. Um, not making it perfect, nothing lines up, kind of going different ways, um, just like kind of a normal spider web, but really adding some details um, and some dimension to the tumbler. So there you can also see I added a couple of stars in vinyl um, with the same kind of design that I had done with the decal on the front. Um, and that is part of the decal that uh, I will link in the description below. But I'm just kind of adding the spider web elements here and there because with tombstones, they have spider webs on them <laughs> um, but it just kind of was 
the starting point for the overall, um, just kind of adding another layer to this cup. So play with it, make sure that you have it the way you like. And then I also came in and I did the same thing underneath the handle. So I'll show you that in a minute. But now what I wanted to do is I took this really pretty copper um, nail tape and um, I will try and list it down in the description below. I did buy this a very long time ago. It's from Amazon, but it was just the right color. It's kind of goldy, it's kind of orangey, um, but it just really helped to bring this spider web to life. It's giving me some problems there. But I'm just going to kind of roughly find the background that we had laid with the acrylic marker. And you can see how the look just kind of comes to life. So I ended the spider web on the tombstones. So I really kind of liked how that worked out. Um, but I'm just kind of following the spider webs here and there laying down the nail tape. And I hope you can kind of see how this brought the whole look together. I just really liked how um, the colors played off of each other and it kind kind of filled that void where there was just that empty space that just, it was just awkward. So um, <laughs> don't do what I do and throw the cup when you're trying to cut the nail tape. Um, but I just followed it until I was happy with it. Um, also, you can heat up nail tape just a little, little bit and it will curve for you. It's not the best and I don't really recommend doing it because I struggled with some of the lines, but just do it until you're happy with it. And again, there's no right or wrong, um, but you can see here that I even was cleaning up some of the lines with a little bit of alcohol and just like a micro tip um, applicator and just laid it down until I was happy with the spider web. I did do the same spider web using the handle on the opposite side of the cup. I just did a straight line down from the middle of the handle and just kind of had the um, parts of the spider web come off from there. I didn't want to publish it because it's the exact same thing, but you just use the handle as a guide as the middle um, and then just kind of draw your spider web on. And then I did do a straight line down the middle of the handle and added the nail tape as well, just to kind of add a little bit of a detail and some um, nice kind of, I don't know, dimensional elements to really finish off this mug. Now, anytime I do nail tape, I like to seal it before I move into epoxy just because it has such a tendency of lifting. Um, again, when I told you I redid the decal, um, I put the black vinyl there, so I'm sealing the vinyl as well. This is Quick Seal from Artistry Epoxy. I will list it down in the description, but you can kind of see how that spider web really came together. Um, I just think it's absolutely beautiful. And then here's the spider web on the handle, as well as just kind of that lined detail. But I'm just using a gloved hand and applying just a little bit of this Quick Seal over the pinstriping so that it stays in place. And then I'm just going to let this turn on the turner for about two hours. Then I moved in with three coats of epoxy and this baby was done. I absolutely love how this mug turned out. I've been using it the last like week or two just because it has a special place in my heart just because it kind of makes fun of my husband a little bit and I'm pretty obsessed with him. But I just love everything about this and it's kind of just my whimsical personality brought to life for spooky season. I hope this tutorial inspires you and I can't wait to see what you create. If you have any questions about any of the steps or information, please feel free to reach out and I'll be more than happy to help. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you're notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.